Good morning, Bedford View Methodist Church family. Welcome to our Sunday service, our second Sunday of August 2022. Unfortunately, today, friends, we won't be having communion because I don't have anyone to help me move the camera around. So I can only put it this way, thanks to Charles that he helped me through the WhatsApp video call that he can show me how to do this. But please bear with me. Uh, when TK is back next week, then we will do the Holy Communion service. But friends, I hope that we're going to enjoy this service. Uh, for those who are able to make it to church, and as you've seen through the notices, today we've got the bishop here at BMC doing the 9.30, but then I thought I should continue then doing the recording for the online services. The bishop won't be able to do that. So friends, let us then begin by lighting the peace candle. Father, we light this peace candle to remind ourselves that your God are the light of the world, and that without you the world is in darkness. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that this light will shine in the lives of those who are watching this service, and in turn they will go out there and shine your light to the world. May this service be a blessing to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, now we come to the time of prayers, thanksgiving, confession, and intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this gift of life, O oh God, that you as your people, we as your people, we are blessed to have you as our Father in heaven, a God that created us, a God that loves us, a God that protects us. May you continue being that God in our lives, and may we continue to be faithful to you, O oh God, as you are the provider of everything here on earth and in heaven. So Father, I pray that always we'll be covered by your blessings, and thank you for covering us and showering us with your blessings at all times. In Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, I confess this morning that as your creation, we are not perfect. And God, I'm not standing here to make excuses for us, but to ask for your mercy and repent and apologize for our sins. The ones we know and the ones we do not know, the ones we've done deliberately and the ones we've done by mistake, oh God, through our actions and through our words. May you forgive us of our sins, oh God. May you purify us and cleanse us as your people. So that as we continue to live, we live as people who are forgiven, people who are transformed, who are cleansed and purified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I want to allow you a moment of silence to confess your sins to God. Hear the good news. Your sins are forgiven. And thanks be to God. Amen. Now we come to the time of intercession. Heavenly Father, this morning I pray for this church, Bedford View Methodist Church, the members of this church, and the church universally, O oh God. It is exactly this time, actually this time, that the church is needed to be the voice for the voiceless. As we see so much corruption around us, see so much wars around us, see so much bad things around us. May we as the church be that beacon of hope for your people and shine your light where it's needed to shine, O God. May we as the church be the vehicle of good news throughout the world. Use us, O God, as your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, I pray for all those who are in leadership position, be political, corporate, religious, traditional, and all other aspects of leadership. That all those who are in leadership, including our president, our politicians, God, they may allow themselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. That they may allow the Holy Spirit to guide and lead them in every aspect of life, in everything that they do. They may know that without you, God, they may not be good leaders and right leaders. They may always seek you. And if they do so, we'll get rid of corruption and all other evil things around us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, I pray for all those countries that are facing wars and unrest, difficult times, poverty, that God may bring peace in those places, especially places like refugee camps and people that are homeless, oh God, that they may be covered by your love, by your grace, by your mercy, and they may be kept warm by the presence of your Holy Spirit. May they know that always you are with them. You are their God and you love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, I pray for all those who are in need of healing, members of this church that are in hospital, members of this church that are waiting for procedures to be done by the doctors on them, and all those who are in need of healing, whether they believe or do not believe, God. I pray that you touch them by your healing hand, and they may feel better, oh God. They may pick up their mat, like that man you told to pick up his mat and go. That they may find healing in you, that we know that you are the God that heals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be able to give thanks and praise to you, to confess our sins to you, and also, God, to intercede for us. May you continue leading and guiding this service to each and everyone that is watching. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, friends, now we come to the ministry of word, and our reading for this morning, which is a lectural reading, is Luke chapter 12, verse 49 to verse 53. Luke chapter 12, verse 49 to verse 53. Jesus says these words, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family, divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Friends, this is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you open our hearts and our minds as we hear your word. May your word help us to see the truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Sure, friends, I'm sure you were listening as I was reading and you're thinking to yourself, what on earth is Zola reading? Is that really from the Bible? Is that really the word of God? Did Jesus really say those words? That he did not come to bring peace, but division. Hence my theme is for this morning, following Jesus will bring division. And friends, yes, this is the word of God. This is written in the Bible, and it's not in the Bible by mistake, and these words were said by Jesus, believe you me, and I'll explain to you what Jesus means here. Remember, first friends, that there are many different religions throughout the world. There are traditional religions, there are Hindus, there are Muslims, there are Rastafarians, there are Christians. Jehovah Witnesses, there are Jews, you can name it, the list is endless. There are atheists, the list is endless, friends. So then, Jesus reminds us of his mission then here on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. With these different religions, surely, if you leave one religion to become a Christian or a child of God, do you think your family will be happy with you? Do you think people that are close to you will be happy with you? Do you think the Jews love the, the organization called Jews for Jesus? Do you think people love missionaries that go throughout the world in communist states and, and, and share the word of God with people? No. <coughs> Excuse me, friends, I've got flu. Jesus says here, I have come to bring fire on earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. What does he mean by that? Friends, if you read your Bible, you will remember that fire represents purification. Fire represents being cleansed. 
So, in other words, Jesus is saying here, friends, remember, the first thing I'm here to do is to deal with you first. You as a non-believer, you as the one who's not a child of God, you who's not a Christian, you who's not born again, let me deal with you first. I need to purify you. I need to, to, to make you mine. So the first step then is to get rid of all evil. Is get rid of all the dirtiness that the sin has caused in our lives in and out. So Jesus is saying, that's the first thing, I've come to bring that fire, that fire that will purify you, that fire that will change you. And even for believers, when that fire comes, it keeps, you know, purifying them like gold. So therefore, in other words, you should be not be scared of that fire that Jesus is speaking about. Because that fire should be burning in our hearts. Remember John Wesley, the father of Methodism. When he gave his life to Christ, he said, I felt my heart strangely warmed as I was listening to this sermon that was being rendered by Rotary. As I listened to this sermon, then he says, I felt my heart strangely warmed. And that's the fire we should have. Fire that will purify us. Fire for the gospel. Fire for the word of God. Fire for Jesus. And that's what Jesus is bringing. And that's the fire we as believers we should be longing for. Don't be scared of it. So the first point, don't be scared. We all need that fire. And Jesus says, I wish it were already rekindled. So he came here on earth to make sure that we are purified, that we are cleansed of our sins. And, we, and he continues to do that to us as believers. And may that fire be burning in your heart and in your life so that you go out there and spread the good news and spread the word of God. And then secondly, but I have a baptism to undergo and what constraint I'm under until it's completed. That baptism that he speaks about is his death. Because him coming here on earth means him dying for me and you, him dying for our sins, him sacrificing his life for us. That's why he's longing for that, longing for him to be held on the cross for you and me. How privileged we are that God gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to undergo the baptism, to undergo death to undergo pain in the garden of Gethsemane, to be mocked for you and me, to be rejected for you and me. We are indeed privileged friends. So therefore, Jesus coming here is a sacrifice. But that sacrifice was worth it because that sacrifice meant that we are no longer dead to sin. But we are saved and we are children of God. Let's give thanks to Jesus for that. And then he goes to the scary part where he says, Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No. I tell you, but division. So apart from him purifying us, apart from him dying for us, he says, I came to bring division. And what he means by this, friends, I'm going to share a story because it was a testimony that was shared by one of the students when I was at Bible College in Port Elizabeth, Warmer, the suburb of Warmer. And this student, this young lady, went to a revival by, as she shared, she said, I won't name names, she said, I went by mistake in the sense that I was with my friends. So they said, we're going to a revival, you know, um, if you want to come. And then she decided to sneak out at night. She was a Muslim. She decided to sneak out at night, went to their friends, not knowing what revival was, got into this big tent, and the word of God was preached. And at that moment, she said she knew that she needed to give her life to Christ. And she went up front, <coughs> excuse me, and then kneeled, <coughs> excuse me, gave her life to Christ, was prayed for, then went home, and 
can see her coming in at night. She slept and then she decided the following day she was going to tell her parents the story. She shared with them, she apologized. I'm paraphrasing things she said. That was in 2003. She apologized for sneaking out. She explained to them, and then she said, I went to this church and to this revival tent, and then this is what happened. And I gave my life to Christ, now I'm a Christian. And she says, the father stood up and said, I'm going to give you two options. You stop this nonsense you say, and you remain my daughter, and you stay in this house. You continue this nonsense, you pack your bags, you leave my house. And the father said to her, when you come back from school, I want an answer. She shared with her friends. Her friends shared with the minister that did the revival. And the minister, through her friends, told him that if you want to continue to be a Christian, it's fine. I will make sure that you leave my house. I've got other children that live there that I'm fostering because of a similar situation that you are in. And she went back home. She shared with her father. And then her father said, first from today, you are no longer my daughter. You don't belong here. Take everything you have and leave my house. And then she went to live with this minister. That's how she, became, she came to our Bible college and she became one of the students. And I know, as I speak to you, that she's got a church in the Eastern Cape, part of the church, in the Eastern Cape in Utah, where she's continuing the ministry to cut the short, story short. So why am I sharing this story with you? Because this is the truth that I'm sharing with you. Why am I sharing this story with you? It is because what Jesus says. Jesus is saying here, don't you think that when you accept me as the Lord and Savior, everyone will be happy with you. Even your own family or your friends would cast you out. So therefore, by accepting me, don't think that it's going to be all joy and joyous and everything. But yes, you have joy in the Lord. But you might be rejected by others. So therefore, following Jesus might bring rejection and division. When he says that, he says, your own family will fight with you because of me when you believe in me. If they are not believers. Your friends might stop being friends with you if they are not believers. So therefore, in other words, there's a sacrifice that is involved here, friends. Because not everyone believes that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. So therefore, some of you, by accepting Christ, you might be rejected by your own family, by your own friends, by your own in-laws. And for those that have got Christian families, you are blessed. For those that don't have Christian families or friends, I want you to say, continue to journey on. Believe in Christ. Give your life to Christ. As long as God loves you. You don't need the world to love you. But you need God to love you. So don't let the hatred, the rejection, the division to set you back. Let it be an encouragement that you're doing the right thing because others don't agree with you. They hate you because Jesus says that in the Word. That the world will hate you when you believe in him. So rather the world hates you than God. So therefore, friends, I want you to go out there, preach the good news, encourage people to give their lives to Christ. Yes, it might be risky for others. It might not be risky for others. But what can we do? The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. That's what my Bible says and that's what I believe. So therefore, let's soldier on. Let's not lose faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. May you continue to bless us as your people. May you continue to strengthen us as we go through difficulties because we believe in you. Thank you, God, for the presence of the Holy Spirit that continues to comfort us and guide us during difficult times. Bless us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, before I pronounce the benediction, just to say, Penny and I, from last Sunday of this month, we will start a prayer service in the chapel that will start at 20 to 9 and ends at 20 past 9. The reason we're doing this, we know that, you know, during Sunday services, you might not have time to just sit and share what kind of prayers do you need, which area of your life you need prayers for.
And when you go there for that time, you are able to sit with us, share freely, and then we pray in that area specifically. So we granted people that opportunity. Some people feel when it's full year, you know, I don't want to go and find people who wonder what's happening in my life. Why am I kneeling there? Why is all in the prayer team praying for me? But when we're there, you've got your privacy, the space, and the prayer team that will be there will pray for other people. It's not like you'll be put on the spot, but we'll have an opportunity. In whatever prayers you need, we will pray for you, and then that's what we're dedicated to do. Every fourth Sunday of the month, we do that. So I hope, excuse me, if you're in need of prayers, starting the fourth Sunday of August, going forward, you'll be part of that service. Thank you, friends. Please, let's raise our hands as we pronounce the benediction. Let's say it together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.